Hello everyone, welcome back to part 11 of Fairy Dragon Fire Elementalist. We're heading into Depths 3. In the last episode, we had a lot of fun on Depths 2 in particular. It was a really dangerous floor. This big vault here, you can see it on the, the map, it's like a bat wings or something. It's pretty big, but it was full of a lot of dangerous stuff. Multiple titans, gold dragons, liches, all sorts of things. And it was really scary. Uh, but we lived. Uh, in part, we respected the dangerous enemies that we saw. And when we got a few at once, we started taking dra drastic actions, such as reading our blinking scrolls. We used two of those. So yeah. Try to recognize danger when you see it and react accordingly. We're going to be trying to finish off depths now. We've got three, four, and five to go. And then we'll be looking for a third rune. At the moment, we're just training our defenses still. It's the same principle that we've been talking about the whole time. Once your offense is fine, you can train, or you should train primarily defense. We technically could be training towards Firestorm and or Ignition which is actually in our spell list, but we don't need it, it's overkill. So, because we don't need it, we're going to try to up our chances of winning the game just by making ourselves more survivable. Rather than turning ourselves into a glass cannon, you can you can win more if you want. I wonder if you can hear these sirens that have been going the whole time. I wonder if my house is on fire. I don't think so. I think it's raining. Um, anyway, you can win more if you want, but if you actually care about ultimately winning, winning more is contrary to that. That sounds so bizarre to say. Um, yeah, uh, focusing offense to the point where you make yourself a glass cannon, so you. Um, deject your defenses will actually make you win less, not win more, which is maybe what you think you're doing. Anyway, let's play the game. I'm gonna, where possible, hang out at the stairs like this so it's safe. Uh, okay, uh, I recall we trained a little bit of necromancy and charms just to up the duration of our Oh, we missed. Regen spell. I'm actually really afraid of the boggit. Yeah, that's why. Okay, I don't care that I'm shooting through my spell forged. Oh, I missed. God. Okay, it's too early apparently. Alright. Now let's start heading back. We're running out of mana. While we're standing on the stairs, we can fire off our last spells. Uh, there's something invis on top of us that we killed. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was. I think it was likely to be a necromancer, considering all the undead stuff that we've seen. Okay, let's check our regen. Before when we were casting it here, the status was immediately wearing off. But now that we've got some some skill in those schools, that should last a bit longer. And it is. Yeah, it's still going now. So I think I'm I'm pretty happy with that. We're gonna go more int. Um, I'm not worried of ever running out of strength. We've only got six, which really isn't that much. But uh, say we get a strength minus strength mutation or something like that then we'll worry about having strength items uh, two scrolls of amnesia okay well some of our spells we could get rid of because they're not so useful now I think all grabs we probably don't need even though we can get value out of it uh, but we're not looking for any other spell at the moment so uh, we don't need to forget all grabs. The one that I've been hanging out for so long is Deflect Missiles. We have never seen that one. 
Here's a large shield. We can't mind that. Just thinking, for these single target enemies, I don't know why I don't use Iron Shot rather than Bolt of Fire. I think I just like the visual of Bolt of Fire more. <laughs> See, there's an all grabs. There is some use yet. Uh, but for multiple enemies like this, Iron Shot, uh, sorry, Bolt of Fire when they're in a line is better, and when they're grouped up like this, Fireball is still where it's at. There you go. We'll shoot the Iron Troll with the Iron Shot. Seems theme appropriate. And we'll back up. We'll even shut the door to get our mana back. Well, Bolt of Fire is definitely the choice against Frost. Uh, ice dragons because they're susceptible to it. Um, this is scaring me a bit. I'm seeing metal walls and um, well I don't think this is heading in to what might be a vault, maybe up is. This is telling me that there there might very well be a vault there. Um, I want, well that's the wrong one, that's all grabs. I've done that so many times this game. Um, but I want a servitor to help us out here. Yeah, this looks like a vault. It is indeed leading into a metal walled room. Well, one good thing about that, I guess, maybe, is that uh, metal walls do the most damage from LRD. I've just been trying to shut the door. I just want to leave it alone for the moment. But every time I walk over, the enemies are there again. back up. I don't want Shrikes to explode out. <laughs> Please, just go away. We'll do that room last. Better to do the vault <laughs> at the end. No man, we, we cannot. It's similar to, well it's actually exactly the same to with the end of um, Rune Branches. The vault's going to be, or you would expect it to be the most dangerous place on the level. And so if you need to teleport from it, which is likely, you want to land elsewhere and you want that elsewhere to be clear of enemies. So you run away from those titans. Okay, never mind. It's just a it's not a scary vault. It's just a vault around the stairs. Okay. Shift X control A removes your exclusions. So that's alright then. I'm being lazy with the Yak tours now. We have 26 shield skill and reflection. So we're probably firing those back at them. What is your problem? Are these guys very resistant to fire or something? Yeah, they are. Okay. I should have learnt after the first one. So we're being petrified, um, which can happen, uh, which is why I made the, the servitor. You can be paralyzed uh, when you're in seething chaos. Uh, this is a, a crab vault. Um, I usually just skip that one. <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of crazy. So it's going to be a whining chamber with various crabs in it. And uh, when you're in Seething Chaos, you saw there that we got petrified, but you can get paralyzed. You can get turned into bat form and then paralyzed. Um, you can do a bunch of things to you. you can berserk you. Anyway. The point is, you don't really want to stand in chaos if you can help it. So, especially in corridors like that, twisty ones. Uh, oh my god. Uh, you're not going to be able to avoid it, so we'll just skip it. The servitor slash ograb struggle is so real. 
I'm wondering if I, I should just switch the macros. <laughs> Probably not, because then I'll start doing the same thing. Uh, okay, this looks like a vault. We'll leave that for now. Oh no, it's tiny. Okay. Or is it? Uh, it doesn't seem too scary. What is your problem, Sphinx Zombie? Die. And it make a server just in case. Yeah, okay, it's fine. It's just a hell entrance. But anytime you see symmetrical stone walls like this, or metal walls or something, your spidey senses should be tingling. Like mine are tingling right now, because this looks like a pattern, and I'm seeing stone and metal. Investigate. Maybe we'll turn our region on just in case. Okay. Doesn't seem too bad so far. Okay. <laughs> it's a bit of a vault, but not too scary. Um, again, I'm seeing a big door and we've opened it. This looks symmetrical. Immediately see a lot of enemies again. I'm thinking there might be might be scary things. Start backing off. Get away from them. Okay. Uh, now we've got a sprig and mh. Uh, so we want to stop flying. So we don't take 150% damage. Strx. And we're going to use the fireball on him, because it cannot miss. Alright, good. Uh, that's the wrong one. I wanted to kill the bog at first. Good. Let's fly again. We'll regen, because we've lost some HP. And we'll chill at the stairs. Okay. Uh, we're going to sh... Oh, the door's been partially exploded. Okay, so we can't shut that and ignore it. Yeah, see, this one does indeed seem scary. We've got now a Ruxasha, Shadow Dragon, Fire Giant, bunch of things. So back up, make a servitor, and we'll try to explode this guy with the Iron Shots. Oh, multiple. Oh, it's not multiple. Shadow Dragons. The Ruxasha's copying them. See if we can get the Ruxasha. Okay, good. And we've only got four mana, so we'll just go back up. We won't give the fire giant the chance to get on top of us when we've got no mana. And we'll just reset the fight. He hurts even in melee. <laughs> As you might expect with his battle axe of flaming. Okay, so we need to be careful in here. We've got a sneak peek of, s sneak peek of some dangerous enemies there. Okay, it's fine. So, yeah, I was thinking, we've got two chambers. If this wrapped around and kept going. It might be one where it gets more and more dangerous every room. Uh, apparently we just picked up another enchant armor scroll but at some point we've picked up three so we're gonna put all of those on our shield and by all of those I mean one because plus five is the highest you can get <laughs> so never mind. Um, our evocation skill we do not have any of but we're carrying around 2600 gold and this has Two box of beasts, which are very good, even with no evocations training. Hmm, and we could train some. Minus one isn't too bad, and we could bring it up to five or so. Um, am I going to bother? We've got two scrolls of summoning. We've got summon butterflies. I think we're okay, but it's something you should consider. Uh, maybe I'll pick them up just to show you. you're thinking, okay, I'll consider it, but I have no info to go on, so <laughs> to what end will I consider it, Ultra? I don't know. I'll show you. So where is that shop here? Alright, 
Fox or Beast. We'll grab both of them. Uh, the sack of spiders without Evo, not so good. And with some Evo, Box of Beasts is crazy good. Oh dear. I see the yellow halo. Because there's a glass wall here. I'm hoping that means a ziggurat entrance. And I'm hoping that's not menace. If that's menace, we're in, in for a ride. Stick that real slow. Okay, it is. Thank god. Alright, it's just a zig entrance. Alright. Menace, if you don't know, is a unique who silences you. Let me find him. This guy. The voice of Zin. He has the spell here, silence. And he's really, really fast. So, when you're a blaster caster like this, when you can't cast spells, you can guess how it goes. <laughs> and when you can't even read because of silence to teleport away. Very, very scary. What would you do? Um, well, I would immediately try to teleport and then just avoid him. We'd skip the floor. But if he actually did get on top of us, I would want to quaff a haste. Um, and maybe even just try to run. <laughs> He's faster than you even when hasted. Uh, but uh, his silence will eventually wear off. At which point then we could teleport away. Because it's really dangerous to fight Zin. Oh, sorry, not Zin. Menace. Even when you're a melee character. When you're a character like this, if you try to melee fight him, you're insane. So just try to avoid him. And if you're a, a blaster caster who's a, a mummy or a draconian, so you're also vulnerable to the holy wrath weapon he probably has, then you just cry. <laughs> um, you can phantom mirror him, that works, if you're not, um, if you're not an evil god, like Kiku who's going to get angry at you for doing that, and literally will not let you even phantom mirror at all, um, I've seen that one, rip, we are diva, <laughs> it's an alarm trap, we just wait on the stairs, okay, yep, yeah. uh, otherwise those box of beasts that we picked up could help too. Basically, any evocations will work. It's just God abilities won't because you need to say them, and reading scrolls and spells won't. Look at these yaktors just killing themselves. We're pretty, except for the lag because of my offline client dying while I'm also recording. Uh, we're pretty immune to these yaktors due to our shield and reflection then just killing them go chop one to eat all right we're on depths five okay so this is where we're going to find our zot entrance um, i'm standing in the the poison cloud even though we have no poison it's probably not wise but it's okay because we're on a stair so we'll just go back up now see how poison we got Dropping to 60 HP. <laughs> Alright, well, this is the perfect situation because the Draconians are just running at us one at a time due to the noise we're making. Um, so we can fight them here at the stairs. But generally speaking, on depths 5, the Zot entrance fort is going to be the most dangerous fort on the floor. So you want to do that last where you can. But this is better. Coming at us one at a time while we're on the stairs? Sure. I have a distant memory of being a treasure of having a treasure trove somewhere. I hit control O. Is that true? Did I imagine this? I think so. Yeah, I imagined it. Okay. No treasure trove. Never mind. Stop flying. That one. You can tell where it says here, the air twists around you, this bit, and violently strikes you. The violently is your reminder that you're 
flying against an Astreco. Oh yeah, flight again. Okay. I was looking for the ring we just took off, but that is not in fact what happened. Alright, we've got a juggernaut coming. Um we're half magic and we're a little bit hurt, so I don't want to be starting to fight a juggernaut. It's really tanky and really scary. So we'll just go up and we'll come back down to a caustic strike. Alright, it's only one right now. Although we see one caustic strike, it's likely to mean more. Um, for that reason we're going to go back up and what we could do here uh, we're not carrying any around our corrosion our cock not that one our corrosion yeah there's a ring that we could buy but we do not currently have with us what I'll do is I'll blink away uh, we first didn't get away and then we miscast it okay that's a bit better that was so not worth it. Okay, well we made a servitor, and then I guess let's just try to blow it up. Yeah, look how much it hurts. We need. There we go. Finally got a good blink. All right. So now we'll remake our servitor. Let's see if we can blow it up with iron shot. Okay, good. Man, those blinks though. Oh. You got a, an idea though of when it finally hit us, how much that hurts. Alright, so one caustic strike means there's likely to be more on this floor. So I think we need to go pick up one of these arc corrosion items. What's our current cloak? It's extra RF and extra int. I like that. So we'll go get the ring, which we can purchase in depths one. Um, if you if you do get stuck fighting a pack of caustic strikes, even say you're just waiting for a teleport to kick in and you don't have any arc corrosion on you, you can quaff a potion of resistance to temporarily get it. And it is worth it. Caustic strikes will mess you up. Even with the arc corrosion. Without it, they will doubly mess you up. Or triply even. Alright, so we've got the ring of Gojax. It's got our corrosion. Um, it's also it's a plus six strength ring. So now we've got an item if we are dangerously low on strength that we can pop on. And um, it has our poison, but I'm not going to replace this our poison ring because of the RF minus. So there are situations where we might want both RF and our poison. For instance, gold dragons. So. Don't want, don't want to be able to. I don't want to have to lose RF to get our poison. There we go. It's just a juggernaut step. Let's check. It is not because we have another floor to go. Is this the juggernaut step? Yes, both of those are. And then this is potentially caustic strike step. This one is. Yeah, yeah. We'll regen first. Let's eat. We've got 56 rations. Yep, here they come. I don't know if I should have yelled. I probably should have just been patient to try to get one at a time to come. And as I was saying, we just went and bought it. Let's put on the Arc Corrosion Ring instead of Magical Power. Okay, that will lower their damage quite a bit. And I'm not going to blink here because we might land up there, which is where the Caustic Shracks are coming from. And that's going to make our situation a lot worse. Yeah. Okay. Got pretty lucky here. They all came one at a time. Excellent. That's a lich. Let's go back up. And the juggernaut's coming. There's going to be a, a fun depths five by the look of it. <laughs> well, we made it through the Corsic Shrikes. That was okay. Let's go magical power again. Got our regen up. There's the Lich. Uh, we'll go with Iron Shot. And this guy, Fireball. Nice. Ah, okay. What's interesting here, and I've just realized it. This, this Lava means we can always cheese this Juggernaut. 
um, because he can't fly. He's melee, but we have flight, so we can always just park him on one side, fly over to the other, and then hit him with spells. If he runs around, we just go back. <laughs> it's a, a thing you can do when you're a flying species or you're one that can swim in deep water. Uh, use your terrain to your advantage essentially by cheesing stuff. Alright, so here, here's another juggernaut. There are multiple on this floor. He's running away. He can't path to us, so he's just running. But then we can... Can we pull him back? <laughs> yeah, well, he's just dead. Alright, and I saw our shield made it to level 15. Let's have a look at our spells. Everything is pretty castable, except for ignition. So, at this point, um, we're not really planning ignition. If we are, we can put wizardry on and quaff brilliance. So, oops, I didn't mean to go down yet. Um, so, I think we can stop training shields here. And yes, it's not 21. It's not the shield penalty point, but that's okay. Because what do you care about? You care about being able to cast your spells. Um, if this was maybe a better aptitude, we'd keep going. Because the extra shield skill would give us additional shield but at minus three this is really costly I'd rather just have fighting and dodging alright so let's let's get our, our mana back and then I'm seeing a, um, a hatch up that I want to check. I think the floor above was pretty safe. Is that true? Oh, is this the was the crab vault up there on depths four? I think the crab vault was depths three. Yeah, it was. It's over there. Okay, so depths four is perfectly safe. Uh, let's check this hatch up. On our all run, we might want to take that hatch, so it's good to know where it leads. Alright, well, at this point, we wandered right into the middle <laughs> of the Zot Vault. Uh, we've got a Gold Dragon plus a Lich. Oh, thank you, the Warp is helping us by warping us away. Very kind of you. We should try to kill him though. It ignores your MR, so the fact that we have max MR does not help us. We're gonna get warped anyway. And they're especially dangerous in Zort. Oh, let's go. The free shocks, I don't think they're gonna do it. I don't think free shocks gonna take a gold dragon down. One last iron shot, will they? But yeah, in Zort, uh, being repositioned is super scary because first of all the dangerous monsters that are in there maybe orbs of fire maybe cursed toes uh, but also because your your blinks are uncontrolled and your teleports are delayed so yeah warpers high priority let's make this a servitor seems like there are a lot of enemies coming Uh, I just remembered these spark wasps are susceptible to poison so all grabs is really strong against them because uh, they're pretty flimsy as well so an all grabs will more or less take out a pack of spark wasps and it looks like our depths might be done <laughs> an armor shop that we can't buy anything from feels bad glowing cloak I don't think we care about there's no regular one that's going to be better than the artifact cloaks we have and that's our depths done alright so time for our third rune so we're playing a caster what do you do um, 
I'm a big proponent of the third rune that you get depends on the character you're playing. It's not always the same one. But in saying that, when I'm a blaster caster like this, pretty much every time I do the slime pits. Um, maybe you don't have arc corrosion. Maybe you especially happen to like um, bolts. Maybe you're a blaster caster who's something relatively stealthy and fast, like a field or a spriggan, maybe. In which case, abyss would be uh, more appealing to you. But the standard one is probably slime. So go get some arc corrosion because the acid's going to hurt. Make sure you have at least one pip of RC. The azure jellies hit you for so much cold damage, it's insane. <laughs> So, yeah, you need to have that. In an absolute pinch, you can use your potion of resistance to get our corrosion. Um, but I try not to rely on that because, especially if you run out of them, it's gonna hurt. And we still have no deflecting missiles. That's really good in slime pits, too, because you can um, deflect the acid spits from the acid jellies. Alright. So let's go to slime. Uh, other things we need to be wary of, you're almost certainly going to end up with some bad mutations due to shining eyes. So I guess that's another thing you might consider. If you have no or maybe just one or two potions of mutation, you might not want to mess your character up or risk it getting something like teleportitis. Um, if you happen to have some lightning spire, that's a very good way to dodge them. Uh, because you can block the line of fire. Um, we can do a similar thing with summon butterflies actually. I'm trying to think how we actually hit it though from behind the butterflies. Um, uh, I guess we can just shoot <laughs> um, bolts of fire through the butterflies. <laughs> that works. Alright, so let's go do slime. Let's put our arc corrosion ring on. Um, I think we can do it instead of our RF, RN, MR ring. Uh, we're never going to have lots of RF damage unless it's from ourselves. So that's another thing. Bring your scrolls of immolation because they're really good in slime. Trust me. I know. I know some of you wouldn't have been picking these up, but go get them now. Scrolls of immolation. It's great. <laughs> uh, but beyond our own immolation, there's not really much or any fire damage in slime pits. And then for Emma, the only thing you care about is Golden Eyes, and at four pips of Emma, we're fine for that anyway. So let's head to Slime. <laughs> and we immediately meet an Acid Blob, and we immediately get Corroded. So the fact that you have Corrosion will not prevent Corrosion entirely. It will block it 50% of the time. And I'm just gonna. How do we keep miscasting blink? It's at 2%. I feel like the last four times we've cast it, we've miscast it twice. Uh, let's get our region up. And these guys I'm not gonna blink from. They're not scary, like the acid blobs are. Okay. Hey, here's our first shining eye. Okay, so when it's being blocked by the, the acid blob, wow, are they resistant to fire? I don't think so. No, it just didn't hurt it at all. Alright, summon a bunch of butterflies. So we'll block, we'll block line of fire between us and the shining eye, and then we'll just try again. Yes, even through our butterflies to blow it up. Okay, so we didn't get mutated that time, it kind of worked. Um, we could also somewhat try to stand behind our Spellforged Servitor, which could work, depending on the, the terrain that we're in. And then the way that Slime Pits works, uh, don't stand on the walls if that's not obvious. <laughs> they hurt you. Uh, but you want to dive. The Royal Jelly is on 
slime 5, so you just want to get there as quickly as possible. Oh wow, okay. This is where Ignition would potentially be good um, to blow up all these dudes. Ignition is indeed a very strong spell here in slime pits. For science, if we put our Ring of the Mage on, Ignition's at 16%. No, no. I don't want to use it just for these regular flaws. Uh, because again, I want to show you that you don't need it. But if you had Ignition here, it would be very useful. Um, magical Power, that's what we want. Okay, so the reason you dive is, first of all, there is no loot anywhere on these upper floors. And I mean literally no loot. Um, it goes back to when jellies used to eat items, so there was no point even having any loot because the jellies would just eat them. Uh, the jellies don't eat them anymore. Go butterflies, go. Okay, it's working. Uh, so yeah, the jellies don't eat the loot anymore, but they still have not been replaced. Well, not been replaced, but loot has never been added in. Oh yes, MVP butterflies. Great. So you're never going to find anything. And then the jellies and slimes themselves don't give you much experience. So it's not even worth it in that sense. Did I really just walk down the same step? I think I did. I'm dumb. But that was a new stir. I'm gonna exit out. Did I really? Oh, I did. I walked down the same one. <laughs> Alright, there we go. That's better. There are the golden eyes. We'll continuously confuse you if you don't have much MR. Extremely scary if you're a, a mummy. You can't get out of confusion. There you go, there's another reason. You might be a blaster caster who's a mummy, in which case maybe slime is not your preferred third ring. But if you had sufficient MR, it would be fine. Let's get a soda. Alright. And they're coming still. I should have waited. Even though we didn't have much magic left, maybe the servitor could have finished off the jelly for us. <laughs> they just keep coming. Alright, now we're trying to find a stair. We're not going to keep exploring up. Even though this stair up, we don't know. We don't care about We're just diving. Let's cast our reason. Hey look, new stair down. Let's keep diving. Hey look, new stair down. Let's dive. Uh, let's not. Let's kill this floating eye first. Okay, never mind. And there's a lot of stuff coming. Oh, we're going back up. Okay, your vision blurs. So we didn't get a chance to block that one. Ah, uh, there's dissolution. Okay. Alright. Um, we should probably try to blow him up. So he's a unique, he's a jelly. The scariest thing about him is, we'll XV him. Well, he hits really hard. So you can hit for um, up to 30, then deal acid damage if you don't have any um, our corrosion, and then hit again, hit you again for up to 50, and again acid damage. So he hits really hard just on his own. But his summon eyeball thing, he can make floating eyes. And those guys, we killed one just before. Uh, after a few turns of looking at you, they will paralyze you. And they will do that smite targeted. It doesn't matter where they are on your screen. And then it will entirely ignore your MR. So yeah. Floating eyeballs, no joke. Dissolution, no joke. Make a servitor here. Um, maybe we'll just sort of randomly shoot some 
free shocks at these guys. When they're just these regular slime creatures, they're not that threatening, and we don't have much mana, so we'll just let our servitor take them on. Alright, so our scrolls take us longer to read, so now it will take us extra time to read teleport or blink scrolls. Um, whoa. The wind is knocking stuff over in my backyard. <laughs> Alright, so I can, I can see us potentially needing to read blink scrolls here against the royal jelly. And the fact that we have 8 potions of mutation, and I think even more, we're willing to buy them we could get one more uh, maybe well let's get down to slime 5 first and have a look but I think there's a chance that we just want to insta try to mutate out of blurry vision even though here on slime 5 we're likely to get even more bad mutes oh, this is crazy I'm trying to blow up the acid blobs uh, let's go back upstairs. It says we're crude minus eight, which is scary. And I think we want to find a new stair down. We don't want to meet everything that was just waiting there at that stair. Okay, we'll go down again. And I'm kind of in two minds. I think with the fact that we found eight, we don't mind quaffing a mutation. Okay, and we got lucky. So we got rid of that immediately, and then we got small antennae on our head, which lets us um, sense monsters that are near us, and also our flesh is heat resistant. That means without... Oh yeah, right, because we're wearing an RF minus ring. Okay, good. But without RF ring, if we have that on, we have max RF. Alright. So the way that you want to fight the Royal Jelly as a Blaster Caster is a bit different to a melee character. For a melee, you want to be inside the middle chamber so that you're not surrounded by um, his summons as you hurt him. As a blaster caster, you want the opposite. You want to be in the open because you want to try to blow everything up. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go around the outside here. First of all, we're going to try to clear these slimes up around so maybe we're going to have to teleport in which case we're not going to get sniped by something uh, but also the noise that we're making outside might draw the royal jelly out to us and it will depend a bit on where we see him how much mana we have how close he is as to whether or not we want to fight him you can be a bit choosy because the royal jelly will never leave slime 5 so as long as you can get back to a stair you can go back up and he won't follow you like here he is he hasn't seen us yet I'm gonna step back off he's gonna notice us okay so he's now close um, he was at max range in the beginning but we didn't have very much mana left so I was hoping he wouldn't see us we're a fairy dragon we have bright wings so he saw us uh, but we can go back upstairs, he can't follow, even if he was adjacent to us, he wouldn't follow, and so uh, we can reset this fight, I don't know, do we want to go, we can explore around, it looks like there's another chamber up here, maybe, um, rather than walk through these acid walls, we can dig, no, it's not here, okay, often there are, um, broken chambers in slime so I guess we can go to this first room we're gonna regen first hopefully the noise that we made it was in fact true when we were over here drew the enemies from this stair to us which looks like that's what happened alright go servitor if you could kill the shining eye for us we'll just stand behind you okay good it was just that dissolution fight, that's the only time that we've been mutated. We've been doing a pretty good job with butterflies and now servitor too. 
avoid those. Now that we're in a world with no mutation resistance, <laughs> you got the butterfly. Nice, it works. Good spell. Very good level one spell. Free for us. We can have infinite butterflies at all times. That's not really worth it. It doesn't do much. Okay, so I'm just heading back down here again. The royal jelly might be here. He's not. He tends to like to go back inside his home. Okay, well, he is hanging around. And he's coming. Alright, um, I think we teleport here. Because we. We do not want to be taking shots from him. He hits really hard. Okay, and let's go back down to the stairs. This might be... No, he's coming again. Okay. Sneaking, that might be perfect. But no. So we teleport again. Ooh, there's a third stair up. Uh, we'll rest to get our magic back up, and then we'll check it out. I think this might be it. <laughs> we're, we're sort of setting up our plan. Okay, so he was up there before. He was up left. Let's shout a bit. See if we can get his attention to run down to us so we can fight him here next to these stairs. No. This is where scroll of noise would come in handy. I mean, we could just cast a, a fireball for the hell of it. That'd be really loud. Did that bring him? No. Okay. It's being difficult. Sometimes the royal jelly is. That's alright. You can take your time. Set up a good fight. And then execute it quickly. I'm pretty sure that's verbatim. Uh, Sun Tzu. <laughs> Sun Tzu quote. Out of the art of war. I think that's how you say his last name. Uh, anyway, no royal jelly, so we'll keep going around the outside. Around the outside. Around the outside. And here he is. Alright. We've got four scrolls of blinking. Okay. Maybe maybe at this point we just we read one. Because here we're getting our third rune. And after that, we're going to be heading into Zot. In Zot, you cannot have controlled blinks, at which point our scrolls of blinking become much less valuable. They essentially become a free blink in terms of mana. But we can blink anyway with two mana points. So I'm not averse to just blowing a blink scroll here. We could keep teleporting around and just be really patient until we finally get the raw jelly at the stairs but I don't mind blowing the blink here so we're gonna blink black towards the stairs and then we're gonna prep for the fight so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to quaff a potion of haste we've got seven of those um, we could quaff brilliance and that would help us potentially cast ignition but even if you're not thinking about that. One of the effects of Brilliance is that it ups the spell power of your spells. So even just our Bolt of Fire, our Fireball, it will up both of those. Which we want to do as much damage as quickly as possible. So that is worth it. If I can find it in the list here. Um, ignition is at 13%. So we actually could cast it. But again, I don't, I don't want to. Um, okay. And then what do we do? Okay. Well, we wait for the jelly to come into vision here. And the first thing I'm going to do is throwing net it. And what? <laughs> what? Ultra? What? We have zero throwing. How did we just net throw jelly? Well, it works, I want to say, nine times out of ten, or maybe even more than that. It works the vast majority of the time. The way that throwing nets work is kind of funny. Um, your throwing skill dictates 
how likely you are to hit something when you throw it, but if you do hit something with a throwing net, it nets them 100% of the time. Now, the Royal Jellies, um, let's have a look at it, we'll XV it. Uh, it basically has no evasion, like none, normal evasion. So it barely dodges, and it's also pretty big, but still nettable. So your nets never miss, basically, even with zero throwing. So it's extremely potent. And now that he's netted, we want to start hitting him with our spells. So if you had Orb of Destruction, which is um, a lot of damage and full screen, you'd hit him with that. Our highest damage is Iron Shot, but it doesn't reach that far. So we're just going to go with Bolt of Fire. Alright. And as we start killing him, he's still netted. He's going to start making these... Um, they're not technically summons, but he's going to start spitting out these other acids, etc. Um, now what's useful for us here is we can read an immolation scroll, and then if we bought one of those summons, it's going to set off a chain reaction where they all start blowing up, and it's going to really hurt the royal jelly. So that first acid blob's nearly dead. Let's read our immolation scroll. They all get that red mark. Um, where is the royal jelly? He's there. He's not next to them. Um, which is annoying, but it's okay. We can bolt him. Alright, they started blowing up. So we go here with, with fireball. We want to keep blowing them up so that the chain reaction keeps going. And in fact, let's read another immolation here to get it on all the rest of the new ones who have just shown up. And then this is the bit where... Um, you just explode it and it's all glorious and you're basically approximating how that spell works ignition works but without with only needing fireball and immolation scores there we go so everything blows up uh, let's go one more immolation just because the royal jelly is going to die but it makes it easy for us to mop up all these remaining ones yeah, look at them go. <laughs> I didn't even need to cast anything else. One of them died in the fire, and then just everything else blew up. I love it. It's so good. Alright, so there we go. There's our royal jelly done. Excellent. Okay, and now we can just explore around. We can go grab our loot. Uh, another box of beasts. Let's see, is that a, it's a regular ring? You know what regular rings we don't know anymore? Curse mice to strength. Great. A third ring. Nice. Another mutation potion, which we might need. And I'm not seeing anything else too exciting. Oh, there's an, an artifact ring. Maybe I spoke too soon. Glowing boots. Plus zero boots of stealth. Um. We are carrying around many enchant armor scrolls, so even though we're bad at stealth, we may as well have boots of stealth. They're superior to plain boots. And we're gonna ID this ring. <laughs> stealth minus ring. Uh, this this has a vocable blink, and then it's got R poison, R C plus, slay plus five. That's another slay item. We got slay plus three on our amulet. This could be slay plus five. We could become a Plus 11 spear slay guy. Deflect missiles? No. No deflect missiles. Never deflect missiles. Alright, so I like that ring. That that ring is superior to the poison resistance one. Um, better to fight gold dragons with extra RC. And I guess the sling is nice. Let's have a look. Um, we're not going to need our corrosion anymore. So we can take that off. I'm not going to drop it. Um, there are situations in Zot where you might want it. Yellow Draconians corrode you. Um, there are some vaults that have Oclob plants, in which case we'll want it too. Um, so we're going to keep carrying it with us. But I want to test this our poison ring that we just picked up. Because of the evocable blink, it's at 28% chance to work, and that's without any Evo. Um, I think let's turn a little bit of Evo on. We'll just take it to five. Oh, that's not what I wanted. We'll take it to five. 
Okay, because at this point, the only skills we're training are really high level. Um, evocations will get to five really quickly and pretty easily. And what's that gonna, what that will do is give us an evocable blink. So even if we end up next to, say, a Panlord that has a silence spell, we can still get away from him by evoking blink on this ring. Um, it's also just that little bit of evo. If we ever use our wands of, wand of clouds, it will help. And it will also make our box of beasts more powerful, which we've got three of, which is really nice. All right, so I think we're, we're done here. Yeah, it's time to head into Zot. So we'll end this one for now. If you come back for the next one, that should be the final episode. We'll be going into Zot and hopefully pulling out a win. See you then.